cool. Hey everyone, it's Devin here with Make Anything, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Anycubic i3 Mega 3D printer. I'm kind of in between 3D printing projects, so I thought it would be a good time to finally review this machine that I've been using for close to six months now. If you've seen enough of my videos, you've definitely seen the i3 Mega in action. You've seen how beautiful the prints that come off of it are. And if you've looked at my list of recommended printers at makeanything.design slash favorites, this thing has been near the top for a long time. And that's just because I can't have two number ones. The number one is the CR10, but the Anycubic i3 Mega pretty much does everything the CR10 can do as well or better. The reason the CR10 is number one is because it's got a much larger build volume for nearly the same price. But if this 210 by 210 by 205 millimeter build volume is enough, this is pretty much the printer I'm gonna recommend for you. If you're a first time printer or you just want really reliable prints. That's pretty much my summary. I probably should have saved that for the end of this video, but I'm telling you right now, this printer is amazing. I've used it for six months. I've printed a lot of things. I've printed things that take up the full build volume. I've printed things that are a bunch of little objects taking up the space and they always come out really great. I think this is probably my most reliable printer that I've used. So I've actually got a print I just finished up on the bed right now. So I'm gonna show you how easily that comes off the bed and then we'll start up another print so you can kind of see the process working with this printer. Here's the print I just finished and it's about 50 pieces printed at once for my next project, which you'll hear all about later. But basically it's really tough to print a lot of tiny objects like this at once and have it remain accurate. And it's also a great way to show off this ultra base build plate, which is one of my favorite things about this printer. Anycubic developed this glass build plate with a special coating that makes it really great for having prints stick down. And then after the build plate has cooled down completely, the parts come off super easily. Just look at how easily these parts come off with very little force and no tools necessary. And if anything, you just need a little bit of prying with a spatula for large parts. But it's honestly one of my favorite build surfaces to print on. And just look at these resulting parts. There's no layer shifting. It looks super clean. And that's really difficult to get out of a cheap printer like this when you're printing so many parts at once. After you've removed one print, you're pretty much ready for your next print without any preparation in between. Very rarely I've cleaned the build surface using rubbing alcohol and a paper towel, but it's usually not necessary. And the same goes for leveling the build plate. There's a screw in each corner for leveling, but I've done that maybe three times in the six months I've owned this printer, just because it's so sturdy and well built that it doesn't really require adjustment once you've got things figured out. Let's go ahead and start another print. So we've got our SD card here on the right side that holds the G code, or you can plug a USB cord directly in, but I tend to always use the SD card. And on the other side, we've got the on switch. We'll power that on, and here you can see the front interface. So I made this little make anything cover plate just for fun and aesthetic purposes, but everything here is basically stock. We've got this LCD screen and it's touch screen. So we've got three starting buttons and you can enter each of them and play with all the settings you could possibly want. So here we can go ahead and manually set the temperature. So if we want to swap out filament, we can set this up to uh, 200 degrees or so. Sometimes I forget if a certain object is under setup or tools. That's kind of ambiguous, but it's really not such a big deal. I basically just preheat the printer and start prints and all these other settings I tend not to use too often, but you can feed in filament, you can home it, you can preheat it. You can do all that good stuff and it's all within a few button presses on this menu. I'll be using the same Burgundy Pro PLA from Matterhackers for this next print, but let's just pretend I'm swapping it out. So here we've got the feeding mechanism. This little knob is a little mod I added myself. It's nice, but not necessary. And basically you can feed filament in through the software, but I like to just manually do it by pressing this lever and pushing the filament in or out. So let's go ahead and take this burgundy filament out and we'll just clean up the top with some flush cutters. And now pretend we're swapping in another filament. This thing right here is the filament runout sensor and it's optional, but it's pretty nice if you're doing a really big print or if you're not sure you'll have enough filament for your print. Basically, you just run the filament through here, and if the filament is cut short or if it stops feeding, the printer will recognize that and automatically pause the print and wait for you to put in new filament. That just sticks right here with a magnet. It's nice and convenient, and then you can just continue feeding in your filament. 
I'll go ahead and put my knob back on and that just makes it a little easier to push the filament through right here. You can download that at my mini factory and the filament will feed through this white PTFE tube and into your hot nozzle. So we'll purge out a little bit more filament just to make sure it's coming out nice and clean. I'll pull that away with my tweezers and we can go ahead and start our print. So we'll just go to print, go through the menu, select the part and there we go. You can see this little status screen to make sure everything's heating up properly and see how far you are into your print, but basically you can leave things alone and the printer will do what it's been programmed to do. As this print starts, why don't we look at how this printer works? The mechanism is actually pretty similar to a CR10, but everything is just a little bit more robust. To control the printer in the Z direction, we've got these lead screws one on either side of the printer to keep it nice and stable. And then for the X direction, we've got this pulley moving the hot end back and forth along these two strong stainless steel rods. The Y direction uses the same pulley and rod system, but it's moving the bed back and forth. And the stepper motors and everything is basically built into this block of a base for the printer. It's all super sturdy, so I haven't had any problems with things misaligning or anything like that. I was actually worried about this hot end being too robust because it's got a lot of screws that might be annoying to take apart if you have to do any maintenance on this hot end, but I honestly haven't had to do any work on the hot end yet, so I guess it's not that big of a problem. In fact, I haven't even had to swap out the nozzle. As far as noise level, I do feel like the fans have gotten a little louder over time, but it's pretty much comparable to most other 3D printers. If you have this next to you on a desk, it might be a bit annoying, but if it's one room over, you won't even notice. Here's that first layer finishing up and as you can see, it looks very clean, consistent, and everything's sticking down really well. As far as the print speed, I tend to not go above 50 millimeters per second just because I prioritize quality over speed, but this thing could handle much faster printing than this. But even so, it's printing really well at this speed. All right, well, I think I've said pretty much all I need to say about this printer. So I'm gonna let it go ahead and finish up its job. It's pretty much the same thing that I was printing at the beginning of this video. So you know how that looks. And if you need any further proof that this is a great printer, just check out a lot of my past projects. I used it for my human bop it for a lot of the really big and important pieces that were gonna be the most seen pieces, you know, those like different knobs. I trusted this thing to handle it and it handled them really well. I use this for my 3D printed fabric as well, which is not the easiest thing to print, and it came out beautifully. I used it to print some of my little uh, Make Anything logos. I used it to print some ambiguous cylinder illusions that I'm selling on my store. I used it for the gear, those little gear boxes that I designed for my other Anycubic printer. So obviously I'm really highly recommending this printer. I mean, I'm just being honest, it's been through so much and it's been really great. If I were to build a dedicated print farm, I'd probably have several of these, along with some CR10s for larger projects. But for just reliability, for just printing wonderfully and not giving me any problems, the Anycubic i3 Mega is where it's at. If you're just getting started with 3D printing, it's hard to go wrong with this machine. Unless you're planning to do a lot of printing with flexible filaments, then I would look for a direct drive printer instead. Uh, if you're trying to do really large projects, check out my review on the CR10. Of course, you can always stick pieces together, so it's not the end of the world. And I guess if you're just playing around with 3D printing a tiny bit and you're not ready to spend $400, there's cheaper printers to get you started as well. But this one will give you a really great experience. So, uh, yeah. Anycubic i3 Mega is great. Good job, Anycubic. Keep it up. Alright, I think we're good. If you have any more questions, let me know in the comments. If you have experience with the Anycubic i3 Mega, good or bad, share it in the comments as well. I'm sure everyone here would appreciate that. Look forward to more cool projects on the i3 Mega and other printers. I'll be reviewing the CR10S soon. I also just got the Zortrax M200 and M300 printers. So we'll be playing around with all of those, but that's it for now. So until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.